So thank you for that introduction. Um, my hope today is that I can inspire you to think about how you can be more welcoming to those who are in need, and by that I mean in the broadest sense, so that you can hear those uh, sweet thank yous and you can respond by saying you're welcome. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how fortunate I am, and I think I should start by talking about how fortunate we are to be in a place this beautiful, to hear such inspiring speakers today. But a little bit about myself. I was born a giver. There's givers and takers. Um, and I think I was really fortunate because it meant for me that I have a natural inclination to want to help others. I was also raised by a very big-hearted and wonderfully empathetic, sweet, sweet mother. She's a type of woman who she gets off of an airplane and she calls me to tell me how her trip was and she's like, I made the best friend today on the airplane. And I'm thinking, oh, I feel so badly for the woman or man that she sat next to. <laughs> um, contrasted by my dad, who's an amazingly generous and caring um, and hardworking guy. And between the two of them, um, they really made me into the person that I am today on top of this idea of being a giver. And in addition to that, I was the oldest of three boys. And I think there's something that goes along with being the firstborn. And for that, um, I, I'm thankful. And I think it caused me to be a bit more responsible and a little bit more empathetic as well. So my journey on giving back really started when I was 10 years old and I attended a summer camp up in northern Wisconsin. And for me, it was an opportunity to get away from the city and really flourish and, and be myself and get out and do interesting things. And weird to be independent at 10, but really it, it, it created that. And there was a camp director and his wife, Lou and Renee, who were the most inspiring, thoughtful, caring people who really asked of all of us to figure out how we could be more appreciative of each other and the things that we had. And they started a scholarship fund called Camp for All Kids. And the proceeds went to those uh, children who were from underprivileged families who didn't have the opportunity to get up and go into the Wisconsin woods. And it was something that we all learned that we should do to help and contribute and give back. And I've been donating to, to that Camp for All Kids Fund since I was 13. When I got to university, I was on the track to head into a legal profession, which I only lasted 10 months in. Um, but one of the things I realized was there was a lot of people who needed help who couldn't afford it. And so even though I wasn't really sure what I was doing, I uh, volunteered to work at a place called Colorado Legal Services to help those who were in need. And I was uh, taught and was able to contribute and give back to people who had si simple legal needs. Um, and then when I got out of university and I, and I ended up deciding where I wanted to work, um, I chose companies based on their brand, based on the industry, based on their culture, but also on how big-hearted they were and whether or not they were interested in giving back. So I was very fortunate to uh, land a job at Levi Strauss and & Company. And the Haas family there is really known for being thoughtful and caring. And they were actually on the forefront of a lot of things that the world was, was struggling with, whether it was AIDS, whether it was um, the water conservation, whether it was diversity. And the thing that I loved about the Haas family was they not only donated themselves, but they also encouraged us to give back and to volunteer. And that continued when I moved on to work at Gap Inc. And there, um, I was uh, in the good fortune to be able to actually hire in the head of the Gap Foundation Board of Directors. Her name's Bobby Silton. And she was an amazingly thoughtful, generous, caring woman. When she got hired, I kind of made a little deal that I also meant I get to go on the board of directors as well of the foundation. And through that board, I was able to really figure out how to contribute and how to make an impact in people's lives. And together, we created this mission um, of Be What's Possible, which I thought was such a great calling to say to our employees and to others, how can you be what's possible? How can you do something 
that you want to be, that you want to do for others, and get out there and do it. And the nice part was the Fisher family, who was responsible for our gap for, from its inception. I got to sit in the board of directors meeting with uh, Doris and Don Fisher, and they were really, really interested in how each and every employee was going to give back. And they were looking at participation rate, and they were figuring out ways that you gave back in the things that you were good at, so that you could help others in what you were good at yourself. And one of the things I loved about the foundation was it allowed us to recognize our volunteers through volunteerism. And so one of the things that we did was we ended up leading uh, vacation um, trips, which were volunteer vacations. So we polled all of the people they could apply, and then the top volunteers for that year, we took on uh, volunteer vacations. That year, we went to New Orleans to help with the Katrina um, aftermath of the, of the hurricanes, and we took a group to Guatemala. I was fortunate enough to lead that group, and I was so inspired by the people who I was with and the things that they were doing. I was also really curious about and, and appreciative of how much they thanked me and us for giving them the opportunity to give back and for recognizing there was a life beyond work and for encouraging them to give back and to volunteer. And so when I came back from that trip, I decided two things. One, I was going to figure out how, as my uh, HR leadership progressed and how I went into more and more areas of responsibility, I was going to figure out how to influence the policies and practices of companies to figure out how volunteerism became something that we supported and that we encouraged our employees to do. And second of all, I also made a personal commitment that I wanted to volunteer more. I wanted to get my family involved in volunteering, and it was something that was going to be important in my household. And in fact, my kids were quite young, which you'll see here. Um, and when they got an allowance, we decided that we were going to give them a third of their allowance went into savings, a third of their allowance went into something they could spend money on, and a third of their allowance went into uh, money that was going to a nonprofit of their choice, trying to start and teach them early on. So I was so inspired by this trip to Guatemala with GAP that my parents, my wife Lindsay and I, made a contribution and donated a home in Guatemala, and my family went down to build that home with the family in need, and here we are together. And I have to say, it, it gives me goosebumps, and it also, I just pulled my kids because I've been traveling with them, they did say it was one of the best vacations we've ever had, and, and we've had some good ones, fortunately. Um, so, I also want to share with you not just stories, but data. Um, and I did some research, and here's what I found out. 76% of volunteers would say that the volunteering improved their physical, their mental, and their emotional health. 78% of volunteers said it reduced their stress. And 96% of volunteers said it provided them with purpose in life. That's pretty powerful. In addition to that, if you're uh, working on how you justify this at a company, whether you're a skeptic or a CFO, um, at least 50% of the volunteers said that it helped them with skills that helped them to, to create a better career for themselves, whether that was performance uh, management or leadership or uh, communications. And at least 60% of the people said it helped them to collaborate better with, the, with, the, with their colleagues. That's impressive statistics. And it shows that it's not only the right thing to do, it not only helps those in need, but it helps you as an individual and it helps your company, and it creates unbelievable engagement. So when I started at Airbnb four and a half years ago, I made sure that, that social impact, is, which is what we called it, or volunteerism, was a key to the, to the strategy and to the programs I was putting in place. So within a few weeks of starting at Airbnb, I have my kind of wish list, and in my honeymoon period, I was going to do whatever I could. Um, I was able, with the support of Joe, Brian, and Nate, the three very wonderful, authentic, generous, generous founders of Airbnb, to instill a program that allowed every one of our employees to spend four hours a, a month uh, with paid volunteer time. And that was really, really well received, as you can imagine. And this picture is of me in India with a uh, bunch of school children and our um, Indian team uh, giving them, here I'll show you, um, both blankets to keep them warm 
as well as uniforms, so they could feel proud of going to school like the wealthy kids in India. And those smiles really say it all. So at Airbnb, my team and I really took those four hours of vacation and what it did for our employees and how it made them feel and what we did for the communities, and we really expanded on that. So Ray Richman, who uh, was really the pioneer of this with me, and Tori, who um, had started it before I even got there. We created all these additional programs that now exist at Airbnb that I'm super proud of. For example, employees volunteering with Airbnb hosts to break down the walls between employees, hosts, and guests, so that hosts could open their homes for disaster relief or even for housing refugees, which I'll talk about in a minute. Social impact champions in every office volunteering as part of our inter in induction uh, week, week of good, which is a time when all offices go out and help. Uh, in the communities in which they operate, teams volunteering during the holidays rather than having holiday parties, and finally milestones being recognized rather than watches or champagne when you've been there five years. It's donations to nonprofits. So I want to tell you a few stories about some of my Airbnb colleagues who have done some amazing things. So Flo here in his red shirt um, used his volunteer time. To connect NGOs in the refugee world with hosts who wanted to open their homes, Flo himself actually moved out of his home for three months, moved back in with his parents, and let this gentleman here, uh, Amjad, who's a Syrian refugee, live in his house to assimilate in Paris. Not only did he do that, he did a crowdsourcing and raised 6,000 euros so Amjad could learn uh, French because Amjad's real thing he wanted to do was go to medical school. Well, I'm happy to say Amjad speaking fluent French, and he's enrolled in medical school. And Florent continues to help uh, connect uh, refugees with hosts. Some of you may have participated in this one. Um, a guy named Dave Wilner and his wife started a crowdfunding after they were embarrassed um, by the Trump administration's decision around what was going on with immigration. And they decided to do a crowdsource on how to reunite a refugee、um, immigrant with his parent. They raised almost 20 million dollars just by putting this post on Facebook. That's incredible. I want to talk about Dan and Michelle, who left Airbnb recently and have started a company called、uh, Benevolent. And what they've done is that they've started, and you'll see this soon, hopefully. Something called Give with Alma, which is philanthropy made easy, and it's a way for you to contribute for、um, any nonprofit that's locally relevant to you. So, lots of great stories coming out of Airbnb, and the last one I have is Tom, who is a host in、uh, in Rio de Janeiro, and we got to go down and spend a little bit of time with Tom, who hosts hosts in Rio and gives all of the money that he makes for his home. And started it、um, to put together this music school in the favelas outside of Rio. And here you can see the smiles on these kids' faces because they love the instruments and they love the music that they're playing, and they were so appreciative of Tom and what he had done. So, what have I been doing since I left Airbnb in January? Well, a couple things. First of all,、um, I continue to be on the board of directors of First Graduate, and there we help、uh, kids who are from non-college-going families. Be the first in their family to go to to go to university. We make a ten-year commitment, and we help them all the way through the time that they graduate. I've also started working with a very unique venture capital firm. Silicon Valley has a bad reputation for many good reasons. A woman named Arlen Hamilton,、uh, who's gay, black woman, decided she wanted to level the playing field, and enough was enough. Three years ago, she was ostensibly、uh, living on her mother's couch and making ends meet. Now she's raised three funds, a million dollars each. We've we've funded founders who, what she defines as underestimated, so those who are women,、uh, people of color, or gay. And I'm really happy to announce that we've、uh, funded 100 companies, all founded by underestimated founders. And lastly, I wanted to share with you what's going on in some of the education institutions. So. Um, my daughter Evans just graduated from Colorado College, and there, they require every student to come a week early, and together, they volunteer within the community around Colorado Springs. So they're learning to get to know their colleagues, and they're also being 
um, encouraged to give back in the community in which they're going to be living for the next four years. My other daughter, Eliza, goes to Tulane, which is in New Orleans, and after Katrina, that institution decided that every year, every student was going to be required to do some service learning. And it's super impressive to see uh, what she's doing and what she's getting out of that. And lastly, uh, I had the good fortune of being back in Paris, where I lived for two and a half years with my family. And my wife and I were running near the Palais Royal, and the French are really proud of making things beautiful, and here they even made a construction site beautiful. And we were running, and all of a sudden I said to Lindsay, hold on a minute, I want to see what's going on over here. And as I got closer, what I realized was the French had put up some inspirational posters and paintings around how they wanted to influence both their residents and visitors to think about diversity and inclusion and to help identify the ways that you should be helping others through this beautiful painting. So I'm hoping that through data and through stories, you've been inspired, and I've compelled you to think about how you can be more welcoming to those who are unfortunate or are in need, and that you can consider how you might get out and volunteer or bring volunteer programs to the place where you work so that you can respond to that sweet sound of someone who needed your help saying thank you, and you get to say you're welcome.